During a recent trip, my deep cycle battery decided to die on me and I had to scramble in a small little outback town looking for a, a new battery. So at that point, I decided I need to really seriously think about going lithium. Well, today's video is first of all, what went wrong? And secondly, am I going lithium? Welcome back. Well, first of all, if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community. So hit that subscription button and the notification bell because I bring out a video every single week. Now, recently I did a 12 day trip to the Southern Flinders, a gorgeous part of our state and I had a really good time. So the various videos from that trip are slowly coming out as I edit them. So keep watching out for them. The first one was out last week. If you missed it, go check it out. Link in the description below. On the very first day, before I could have even started my trip, my deep cycle AGM battery, which powers all my accessories, died on me. So I had to put aside some of my traveling plans and in this little outback town, I had to go looking for a deep cycle battery. Thankfully, I did one, find one, which was actually the only one this one shop had in stock. So that saved the day. But that got me thinking and I had wanted to look at what went wrong because it was only two years old. And this is my second deep cycle battery in a period of three years. So I'm getting a bit to that point where I had to figure out what's going wrong, what am I doing wrong, and what is the future? Do I stay with AGM or go for a, a newer technology battery? So I've been bit of, through a bit of a thinking process and I have reached a de decision of which way I'm going to go. And I thought I'd share that with the rest of you in the community. Hopefully it'll help you as well. At the end of this video, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And maybe you've been through something similar and you found a better way of approaching it. Please do share because I love to learn. So let's start with how I maintain my batteries. Now, those of you who've been following my channel for a while will know that Dicerus, my 80 series, it's built only for touring. So the rest of the time when we're not touring, it's parked at home. It, and I do take it for occasional drive now and then, but most of the time remains parked. It's not a daily runner. So when it's parked, to maintain the batteries, that's to maintain the cranking battery as well as the deep cycle AGM battery. What I've done is I've hooked it to a solar panel which sits on the top of my garage and that gets that feeds power to the two batteries. So as far as I'm concerned, the batteries were perfectly well maintained. And now here's the thing, because the cranking battery, which is five years old, is still going strong. Every time I get a stress test done, it's perfect. It's the AGM that's always packing up. I had to figure out what's going wrong here because I've got a solar panel. It's doing the trickle charge, keeps the batteries topped up. What's going on? By the way, like my t-shirt? Go check it out. It's in overlandjournals.com. 10% off for YouTube viewers. There's a link in the description below. Use it, 10% off. Now in trying to figure out what went wrong, the first place I started was my the notes that I keep on my vehicle's maintenance. I keep detailed notes. So I can always fall back and, and look at what's you know what could be leading to a problem. And then I noticed that the both batteries that I had to replace, the recent replacement as well as the one before that, both were during the winter months. So that got me thinking because, and, and that gave me an idea of what might have caused the problem. Now the solar panel sits on my garage, as I said, and it does its job. Um, it gives the required amperage and keeps it topped up. Well, that's what I thought, but here's the thing. During the win our winters, especially here in Adelaide, it rains and it's most of the time overcast. So the solar panel is not operating as efficiently as it should. But you need to keep in mind, and this is a mistake I made as well, because I've got a voltmeter at the back of the 4B. And every now and then when I'm in the garage, I pop, look through the window and I looked at it, look at it, and the voltage is pretty good. It's up there. But the thing is, voltage doesn't always tell you everything. If you want to figure out if a battery is topped up at its optimum, you need to do check its amperage, how much amperage is in it. So that's the mistake I made. I look at the voltage reading and I take it for granted. It's okay. It's pretty good. It's a good indicator, but it's not the best indicator to tell you whether the battery is in full charge or not. There are different levels or grades of 
quality in solar panels. The higher grade ones, they even in this in the most of overcast situations, will still give the required current that you're looking for. But then you pay a price. So it all comes down to relativity, you could say, you know, how much do you want to pay for a solar panel that you want to keep it to trickle charge your battery? So that made it to one option. I could upgrade my solar panel and then continue using it. Well, that was one consideration. And I'll, I'll to the end of this video, I'll explain if that's the route I went or not. And if not, why not? The second thing, of course, is heat. Now, most batteries don't like heat, but unfortunately, because of its size and bulkness, it, the only place I can keep it is in the engine compartment. And in my 80, being a petrol, it runs much hotter than a diesel. So, of course, when I'm on a trip running around, the heat buildup doesn't do the battery any favors. So, a second factor that could have contributed towards the battery failing was heat, I'm quite sure. But then comes the question, how come the deep cycle battery is having problems but not the crank cranking battery. Here's my thinking. The, the two dead batteries are two different designs. So a cranking battery is designed to take in a quick charge so that it could give a quick discharge of a high amount of amperage when the, at the time of cranking. That's how they're designed. Whereas a deep cycle battery is designed to take a slow deep charge so that when you start consuming, it gives out a slow discharge. That's the nature of the two Bs. So if a cranking battery is fairly low, the moment you somehow crank it, get the engine running, the alternator within a matter of minutes, it's back up, topped up. Whereas a deep cycle is not the case. If you are relying purely on your alternator through some kind of a simple battery maintenance device to keep a deep cycle battery charge. Now I did a video on this some time back. I'll leave that link in the description below as well, explaining in depth the difference between the two. It doesn't do the job because the amount of charge that a deep cycle requires in order to get to the top is not the same as a cranking battery. And that's why uh, we re most people would recommend a DC to DC charger, which I do have. So now I should have known better because my DC to DC charger has a little LCD readout which sits on the dash and it tells me how much amperage is pumping into the deep cycle battery to keep it topped up. A few weeks prior to my trip, I noticed that the DC to DC charger was pumping in a lot more amperage than it normally did. When my accessories are not switched on, that means there's nothing, hardly any draw on the deep cycle battery. So usually when I'm running in that state, the DC to DC charger pumps in about 0.5 amps to keep it topped up. In that few weeks before the trip, I noticed it was pumping way up to as much as six to eight and sometimes even 10 amps. Should have paid more attention. And at the same time, there was one particular day that I had forgotten to switch off one of the interior lights and I thought maybe that drained the battery a little bit from the accessories, maybe. So I didn't pay much too much attention to it, but that was a telltale sign that the battery was having some kind of a problem. So what I think happened was the solar panel will do whatever it can, depending on weather conditions, to keep that battery to topped up. In most cases on an overcast day, that means it wasn't topped up, but it's given it some kind of a charge. And then comes nighttime when the solar panel is pretty practically useless. And then of course the cold weather does not help either in terms of the battery maintaining a charge. So it goes through a process of discharge through the night and then come the morning, the solar panel does its job at whatever state it can and there is a charge going in, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it got to the top. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, like I said, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try and explain as you ask your questions. If you watch that video where I had to replace the battery, go check it out. If you didn't, it's also in the link below. I said in that video that I had to seriously consider going lithium because one, I've been through two batteries already. Each battery comes to about $600, that's, that's $300. So that's $600 for two batteries in the space of a few years. And 
each time I replace the battery, I realize how heavy they are because a 110 amp hour battery is about 35 kilos. And I'm always looking to find ways to reduce weight because more weight, less fuel economy, more wear and tear on the vehicle. So the pros and cons are this. So lithium, let's start with lithium. It's a brand new technology. It's a very good technology. AGM has been around for many, many years. The differences are this. With an AGM battery, when it's fully charged up, and let's say you've got, for example, a 110 amp hour battery. So how you work that out is what the manufacturers tell you, or what the standard tells you, is that if it's 110 amp hour at a draw of one amp per hour, your battery can supply power for 110 hours. Of course, you don't consume just one amp, you know, it'll be more. Now, in my case, when my fridge is running optimally, and if I have one LED camping light switched on for a while or so, my, my consumption is about four amps per hour. So you can work it out. So 110 amp hours, amp hour battery is what I had. Divide that by four, you get the number of hours that battery can supply power, provided the battery is topped up completely. But it doesn't, AGMs don't work that way. AGMs, by the time it hits about 50%, beyond that 50% mark, the battery is, it's, it's a process of diminishing returns, you could say. The battery is not doing too well, and the moment you push it beyond 50%, you're practically killing the battery. And this is where the problem comes in. The solar panel wasn't doing its job. The battery drains down perhaps beyond 50%. In the morning, solar panel kicks in, does its job. I go and take a look and all right, it's the voltage is not too bad. I'm happy with it, but in fact, it wasn't the case. So there was a constant process, I feel, that my battery was going through a 50% down or beyond and then back up again and so on and so forth and gradually dying a slow death. So, whereas in contrast with the lithium batteries, you can drain it all the way down to 100% and then charge it back up again, you don't do any damage. That's the beauty of that technology. Second thing beautiful about lithium as compared to AGM is they are not as heavy. Again, to give you a comparison, 110 amp hour AGM, which what I have, is about 35 kilos, whereas the equivalent of a lithium would be about 10 to 11 kilos, massive weight difference. Third advantage of a lithium is size. Now, you get all kinds of shapes and sizes coming out, whereas AGM batteries, bulky, boxy things, whereas in lithium, there are very slim designs that are available now. Some of them so slim, they can sit behind your rear seat or under one of your seats. That, that's how good it is. So, lithium makes a lot more sense. Now, let's look at pricing. AGM battery, about $300, depending on you know what size of a battery. When I say what size is 110 amp power, 120 amp power, you can go all the way up to, you know, I think 180 or even 200 amp hours, only the battery gets bigger and heavier. So 110 amp is what I've got, that's approximately about 300 Aussie dollars per battery. Equivalent 110 amp, amp power lithium battery, a good one. Now this is where it is. There are lots of lithium batteries available in the market some of them really keenly priced, but that doesn't mean it's good enough for, for those of us who go off-roading and overlanding because you need to get a battery that can withstand all the corrugations, the shakes, the rattles and the rolls. So because in lithium batteries, there's a lot of electronic circuitry in there as well. And the last thing you want is internal breakages. A lithium battery that's good enough for that kind of abuse will cost in the region of about $1,500 and upwards. So in that sense, if you look at it, it's $300 for an AGM versus $1,500 minimum or thereabouts for a lithium. Now you'd say it's a no-brainer. Well, here's, let me put a spanner in the works for that. I've been through two batteries in three years, so that's $600. So I'm getting close to that. And what's the guarantee that this battery that I've got now, which is relatively you know, less than a month old, will last no more than another year, perhaps two. So in another two years time, I'll be spending another $300. That brings me up to $900. I'm getting real close to the lithium price. So yes, lithium battery makes a lot more sense because it ticks a lot more boxes than the AGM does. I 
don't want batteries going flat when I'm on a trip. Now, it was a bit of an inconvenience for me this time because I had a lot of things planned to get done and then I spent a better part of a morning looking for a battery and getting it installed. So, yeah, that's not one of those things you want. But again, I thought hard and mild. And the thing is this, for me, and it's different from each person to person, but for me, when I spend on anything, whether it's for my 4x4 or just gen generally in my life, everything is relative. So here's my thinking. Now, you may, not, you may or may not agree with me. Tell me what you think in the comments below. So if I have a 4x4 for $100,000, I'm the amount of the value of accessories I'm going to put in there is going to be relatively in that line of 100000 purchase price. But my 80 is not. So my 80 comes at a different price point. And so everything that I've put into it has to be in that relative sense. So to me, $1,500 plus didn't quite make sense. So I started, decided to stay with an AGM. Now I know what you're thinking. What's wrong with you? You're going to replace it again in another year or two because your solar panels are not going to work. And now that's another 300 bucks. You're right. So what I had to do was I had to make sure if I wanted to get a longer stretch on my AGM, and I know you, I can, to, in order to achieve that, I need to maintain this battery much better than I have. So solar panel, I could do one of two things. I could upgrade my solar panel to a panel that has a higher efficiency. But then, of course, that comes at a price. So I looked into that. And that was so the solar panel that I have right now, as compared to something of a more efficient technology, was going to cost me about three times more than what I have already got. So that got me thinking. So I looked at, so I looked at the cost of AGMs that I've spent on so far, which is two batteries, $600, and perhaps another third one in another two years, let's say in the current state, $900 or about 1000 bucks. So solar panel, does it still come up to the price or justify not paying for a lithium? And then I found something else. I found this little bad boy. <laughs> this is, it does trickle charging and it does full charging. Now I'm not trying to promote this brand. There are other types of, other brands of this type of devices available. But the thing is, this is only 90 bucks. So this gets plugged into my mains and it does the trickle charge on the battery, whether the sun is out or not, whether it's night or day, raining or not, this will keep doing the trickle charge. So that's 90 bucks. That's a far cry from the, the gap between what I've spent on my AGMs and what I would pay for a lithium. So as much as I love lithium, I've decided to stick with my AGM and do a better way of maintaining it. So. 90 bucks little bad boy is hopefully going to look after me for a few more years. And if I can hang in there and maintain my batteries in a better way, hopefully in the next three to four years, lithium prices would have come down. I'm sure they would. And then I would go lithium because lithium still makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any comments, questions, or perhaps you've been through this same issue and you've found a better way to look after your batteries or maybe perhaps you have gone lithium and you have your own way of justifying it please do share in the comments below i love to learn and that's what it's all about i share my information with the rest of the community but at the same time i learn from everybody else so leave them in the comments below and uh, thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscription button because i bring out a video every single week i'll see you next week in another video